2023 has been an amazing year for the Linux desktop. We've seen tons of improvements to the Wayland protocol, desktop environments and of course the kernel, whilst more and more people have started to use it. The market share of the Linux desktop has seen a massive increase, putting it over the 3% mark. Well, Steam Deck and of course its new OLED revision certainly helped with that, but I generally believe that just a lot more people are more comfortable installing Linux on their devices. In today's video I'd like to talk about this awesome year that I had on my Linux journey, some things that weren't so nice and ultimately what I expect from the Linux desktop in the upcoming year 2024. Let's start off with something that happened very early on in this year. The death of Google Stadia. Even though I predicted it way before the announcement, its shutdown still affected me negatively, since ever since I removed Windows from my computer, it was the only way that I could still play Destiny 2, a game that doesn't run natively on Linux because of anti-cheat. Yeah, it was only seasonal content that worked across platforms, but hey, it was still a bummer. Okay, here I go reinstalling Windows again. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know. Bungie and the Linux community have their differences due to their hostility towards the operating system. Or seemingly so, but to be honest, I just like the game, since it's basically made for me. A first person shooter with RPG elements and a solid campaign regarding the overall picture. There just isn't another game like Destiny. Sure, similar ones in those genres do exist, but they are not the same thing. But that's just me. Nonetheless, this year was an overall disappointment in Destiny and I decided that I don't want to keep Windows anymore because I barely use it. It has also been wasting a lot of SSD storage space and every time I essentially did boot into it, I always had to do Windows updates, even though I only install security ones. So yeah, enough Destiny for a while and Let's see what happens once the final shape releases. I'm probably going to play it. The question is, how? Ok, let's move on to desktop environments. Before I switched to KDE Plasma later this year, I was using GNOME 43 and later GNOME 44 on Fedora. And let me tell you, I think that the GNOME team is doing a really good job with their desktop environment. The Lipidvita window design is not something for everyone, but I still find it incredible how they implemented it. GNOME in general has become very dynamic, where everything feels very minimalistic and slimmed down to the essentials. This can of course also be a bad thing if you like having customization options out of the box, without having to rely on third party applications or extensions. But still, GNOME just does a lot of things right. I for once loved working with dynamic workspaces and so I replicated this functionality in KDE Plasma. Speaking of, a couple of months ago I switched desktop environments for a couple of reasons. KDE Plasma is just miles ahead of GNOME when it comes to new and anticipated features. For once, GNOME still doesn't have variable refresh rate support and you can't play VR on it if you're using Wayland, which has been the default display protocol for quite some time now. And the compositor Mutter doesn't receive as many gaming optimizations as KWIN, making some games stutter even with a high FPS count. Since KDE Plasma is so customizable, you can make it behave very similar to GNOME if you want to. And that's what I did when I switched to a custom Debian 12 installation and I believe the result speaks for itself. So what's new on the Wayland front? Tearing is now supported across the board and allows games to run with a way lower latency. This of course is not for everyone, but it's a nice to have for more competitive gamers. The overall performance and stability of Wayland has improved a lot as well. I don't have any recording frame rate or stability issues anymore. That used to be a pain back on GNOME 44, since sometimes when I had DaVinci Resolve and OBS open simultaneously, the whole desktop would just freeze and there was no way to reset it, since not even the terminal was working anymore. I'm not sure if that issue still persists or not. The X Wayland bridge was introduced and it is now finally possible to share your screen on old X Wayland applications that don't offer support yet. I have seen that some distributions like Fedora already come with it pre-installed, which is neat. Since Wayland seems to become the one and only standard when it comes to display protocols moving forward, I wonder how long it takes for applications to adapt or if they're even going to. But I think they will, as very recently, it seems like many software and hardware providers are actively investigating or even releasing stuff on Linux. Presonus, the company that made my old IO44 audio interface, has just recently released their digital audio workstation software Studio One on Linux. 
Discord is now the official provider of their application on Flathub and with the positive influence of the Steam Deck on Linux, even other companies like Aya Neo are developing their own operating system. The Steam Deck is a prime example on how Linux can be used on a console-like system. SteamOS 3 is so-called immutable, which means by default you can't interact with any important system files. And even if you work around that limitation, a new system update will reset it. That means that inexperienced users are not able to mess up their system, while all of the other advantages of the Linux desktop still persist. Proton, Wells Windows compatibility layer that comes with Steam, has become really good and in fact most games that currently don't work at all are mostly affected by some other factor like anti-cheat. There are some exceptions and fixes that Valve needs to apply explicitly to the deck itself, but the desktop experience has been very impressive so far. I really hope that next year a lot of game publishers will jump on board and at least develop their custom launchers for Linux. Or just keep them compatible with Wine so that we can play our darn games. If that is being fixed, then what we have is an open operating system that is free to use, can easily be maintained in cooperation with others, which then helps to improve Linux itself, resulting in something that can be shaped into literally anything you want. You want a regular desktop? Sure. You want a customized gaming OS for a console that doesn't require any expensive ports? Why not? The Linux desktop still has a couple of compatibility issues with some games, that's for sure. But it doesn't really take much to change that. Once the ball starts rolling, it will accelerate at an incredible pace. And it wouldn't surprise me if Linux became a true competitor to Windows and Mac OS in less than two years. With a world that increasingly relies on cloud services, it doesn't really matter which operating system you use anymore. But having a choice to actually own your PC and not just buy a license to use it would be nice. I for once believe that 2024 will be an even bigger year than this one and we will see a ton of new usability improvements which will result in a further reach of the Linux desktop. HDR is finally going to be ready, GNOME might actually implement variable refresh rate support and the out of the box experience for Nvidia users will finally improve thanks to the awesome work by the Linux community. First tests already show promising results and we are not even in the performance improvement parts. So let's see if Linux can actually manage to beat Nvidia's proprietary driver at some point. I sure wonder how that will play out. In conclusion, this year has been an impressive year for the Linux desktop and I believe that we are finally reaching a point where I can just go ahead and recommend someone Linux and then know that they are able to use it. I'm still not sure how all the AI stuff will play out, like if it's included with Windows, if people want to use it or not, but we'll see. Whatever happens, I'm excited for the next year and can't wait to experience it with you together. Before I end this video, I quickly want to give a shout out to my membership program members, but also you. All of you make these videos possible and I will continue to make better and more interesting videos for you. Let us show them all the power of the Linux desktop. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, then also make sure to do that. Thanks for watching, I wish you a happy new year and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.